Imagine how boring the world would be if you could understand everything just by looking at it. There would be nothing to research and no fascinating facts to uncover. Human beings love a good mystery, and on this channel, we love archaeological mysteries perhaps more than any other. Fortunately, we are never short of them. There are hundreds of enigmatic archaeological discoveries to be found all over the world. So here's an incredible selection of archaeological finds that have been located, photographed and measured, but not totally understood. An archaeological discovery doesn't have to be ancient in order to be mysterious. Take this strange structure for example. It fell out of the sky above Ngezi in Zimbabwe in 2013, and we still have no idea what it is seven years later. Locals reported that an object appeared to explode in the sky before chunks like this landed on the ground, prompting speculation that it might be an old space satellite. Normally, if a space satellite fell in a populated area, the organization that launched the satellite would step up and take responsibility. That hasn't happened in this instance, and nor does the object appear to bear any markings that would identify its creator. All that can be said about it is that it appears to be made from aluminum, and it's around 9 feet long. A registration or unit code of NAS13004-41CS is inscribed into some of the bolts that hold the object together, but the code can't be traced. Somebody somewhere appears to be determined to keep their silence about this, which makes us wonder if it's really just a harmless old piece of space junk after all. If you're a resident of Monroe Park, Virginia, USA, you might be aware of the existence of the Gold Mining Camp Museum. Even if you are, you've probably never given much thought to the enormous boulder-like shapes with tiny metal grills that stand outside the museum. The history of gold mining in Virginia is extensive, but even with all that local history and knowledge, the purpose of these devices isn't known for sure. The museum refers to them as hornet balls, the story that the museum tells says that the vast balls, each of which has a diameter of around 20 feet, would be filled up with ore and then rolled around to break up the rock, making the gold inside it easier to find. The noise made by the balls when they were in motion is said to have sounded like an enormous hornet, hence the name. They're made from reinforced concrete plastered across a frame of iron mesh and were extracted from the ruins of the nearby Liberty Mine. Nothing like them has ever been found in any other mine, and there's no direct evidence to support the ore-breaking theory that the museum has decided to go with. The museum could be totally wrong. Cave paintings vary from country to country. You'll find drawings created by our ancient ancestors inside caves in almost every country in the world, but the nature of what's drawn on the walls of those caves changes from one region to another. The cave paintings of Semei, Kazakhstan are among the strangest that archaeologists and scientists have ever seen. Aside from the fairly typical representations of animals and human figures, there are also drawings that appear to be far more modern in nature. One of them, outlined in red ochre, appears to be an envelope of the kind you'd see on your phone screen when you have an unread email. Others appear to show buildings with tall fences made of bars, which would also be anachronistic for people living thousands of years ago. It's probably nothing but a coincidence, but it does seem odd that these designs appear in these Kazakhstan caves, but don't appear elsewhere. Having said that, perhaps they do. Haji Murat Iluf, a regional historian, insists that he's seen this exact same design reproduced in the Himalayas. The symbol presumably had a meaning to the people who drew it. We wish we knew what it was. The whole world knows about the Chernobyl disaster of April 1986, during which a nuclear reactor melted down close to Pripyat, Ukraine. The scale of the disaster was unprecedented and traces of it can still be found in and around the area of the shattered reactor. None of the physical traces are so recognizable or bizarre as the so-called elephant's foot. The mass of corium and other materials was found beneath the reactor in December 1986, a full eight months after the disaster, 
but was still lethally radioactive at the time of its discovery. Its name comes from its lumpy, wrinkled appearance and foot-like shape. It's quite a cute name to give to what's essentially a shape made from human-made radioactive lava. It wasn't until 1996 that it became safe for humans to get close to the unique mass, which is the year that Chernobyl Confinement Project director Artur Kuneyev took his famous photographs of the elephant's foot and the room that contains it. Even today, the mass is still warmer than the environment around it, due to the ongoing nuclear decay deep inside it. Nothing like this has ever been created on Earth before. Hopefully, nothing ever will again. Archaeologists and scientists think that the Bighorn Medicine Wheel of Lovell, Wyoming was probably a calendar of some kind that Native Americans used to forecast the future and keep track of time. They'll probably never be able to confirm that theory because the Native Americans who made it aren't around anymore, and its design isn't easily understood. The placing of the wheel must have been very deliberate, though, because nobody climbs up the 10,000 feet of Medicine Mountain to make a giant stone circle unless they believe they have an excellent reason to do so. The wheel, which measures 80 feet across, comes with 28 spokes, what appears to be a seat inside a central cairn, and a further six seats positioned around the perimeter. Wheels of this design have been discovered elsewhere in North America, and Wiccans and New Age pagans have appropriated the shape of the design, but the original purpose and intention aren't entirely understood. It was probably built somewhere between 300 and 800 years ago, and it might have been used to chart the positions of the sun and the stars, but that's all little more than guesswork. The town of Taos in New Mexico has become famous for many different things over the years. Its 1,000-year-old adobe complex is a good place to start. And then there are the town's famous residents of the past and present, including Julia Roberts, D.H. Lawrence, and Aldous Huxley. The thing it should arguably be more famous for, however, is its mysterious hum. The first recorded report of the strange sound came from Joe Mullins of the University of Mexico, who conducted a survey and found that 2% of the town's residents could hear the same low background hum that he could hear everywhere he went in Taos. He set up sound recording equipment in the homes of those who said they could hear the sound, but wasn't able to capture anything. Nevertheless, Mullins and the other residents insisted that they could still hear the noise, which has been compared to the sound of a diesel engine idling. More recent investigations have revealed that electromagnetic field levels around Taos are comparatively high, but no higher than any other area that has power lines crossing overhead. The hum allegedly still exists, and scientists are still struggling to track it down. Perhaps 2% of the residents have tinnitus. It might sound strange that the locals of Timmins, Ontario, Canada are so proud of a pool of standing water, but that's only until you find out how long it's been there. This is the oldest pool of water in the world, and it's been in situ for more than two billion years. The fact that it hasn't been disturbed, dried out, evaporated, or otherwise disposed of during that colossal period of time is incredible. It might help that it's in a hard-to-access, well-protected location deep inside a Canadian base metal mine. This is the second time that experts from the University of Toronto have found the world's oldest water at the site. In 2013, they found a pool that had been standing for one and a half billion years, but this one is even older. Both of these ancient pools are around two miles below the ground and were dated by measuring concentrations of gases in the water. While you still might be struggling to get excited about water, the true value of this discovery is that the water contains traces of the ancient organisms that once moved through it. Answers to big questions about how life began on Earth might be contained in these pools. In late 2017, Australian bookshop owner Lorraine Smith was approached by a customer carrying a copy of Alice in Wonderland that they'd found at the back of the store. The customer didn't want to buy the book. They wanted to alert Lorraine's attention to a paper manuscript that they'd found hidden within the pages. That was the beginning of the greatest mystery of Lorraine's life. 
The writing on the manuscript was illegible and didn't appear to be English, but she could make out the date. The manuscript appeared to have been written in 1583. Through reaching out to a historian at the nearest university, she got another clue. The top of Lorraine's manuscript was cut into a zigzag shape, which was common practice in the Britain of the 16th century when legal contracts were drawn up. The contract would be drafted twice on the same parchment and then cut in a zigzag pattern, so each copy could be easily identified as the genuine article if required in the future. The historian was also able to decipher the writing as Old English, written in cursive. It appears to describe the transfer of land between two families known as the Appleyards and the Popolies. But here's the kicker. The plot of land described in the deed doesn't exist and never has. Most of the discoveries you'll see in this video have already been made, but here's one that's ongoing. If you live in the North Carolina region of the USA, we know a team of scientists who would be very grateful for any sourdough you could provide them with. They're trying to solve something of a microbial mystery. How is it that combining flour and water results in the production of so much bacteria and yeast? It's a process that bread makers take for granted, and yet it's never been fully explained. That's what the team at North Carolina State University's Public Science Lab hopes to get to the bottom of. They want to identify, once and for all, whether the bacteria comes from the flour, the water, the hands of the baker, or somewhere else. They'd also like to find out that all the microbes help the sourdough starter to grow, or whether the sourdough grows independently from them, and the microbes do little more than add flavor. It's incredible that so many people eat sourdough every day, and yet the greatest scientific minds don't really understand how it's made. We'll never look at it the same way again. We're moving across the United States of America now and finding our way to New England, where strange stone enclosures can be found scattered all over the land. Most people look at them and don't think about them twice. But what were they used for? And why are there so many of them? What's the meaning of the phrase town pound that's found outside so many of them? Could it be that all of them were once used for housing livestock or might some of them be far older and used for other purposes? The truth is that most of them were used for a purpose that's almost totally forgotten about today, even though it was commonplace only 300 years ago. Town pounds like this were deemed necessary because people had a bad habit of allowing their livestock to graze on common land, like greens or commons. Whenever such an incident occurred and the owner of the animal couldn't be found, the creature was hauled off and imprisoned in the town pound until the owner appeared and paid a fine to retrieve it. If nobody came for it within three days, the animal was sold at auction. Does that explain the purpose of all of New England's stone circles? Probably not, but it's a start. There's a strange looking crumbling monument in the middle of a field in Kojom Kul, Kyrgyzstan that nobody visits these days, and few people remember the purpose of. Even when you discover the purpose, it sounds too unbelievable to be true. Allegedly, this is a memorial to Kojom Kul, a near mythical giant, after whom the nearby village was named. Legend has it that he was 7 feet and 6 inches tall, weighed more than 350 pounds, and could lift and carry a full-grown adult horse. This isn't an ancient myth, though. Kojum Kool was born in 1889 and lived until 1955. He used his awesome strength for the good of his village, winning many regional wrestling and strongman competitions and donating the prizes to the people of his community. That's why the village was named in his honor after he passed away. The fact that he existed can't be debated. There are still photographs of him lifting weights in a small museum situated in the middle of the settlement. As for whether this monument was truly intended for him, who can say? Each of the cloths tied to its central pillar is allegedly a testament to his strength, but nobody can explain how that works in terms of symbolism. The structure may fall down before anyone can prove or disprove its connection to Kochum Kool. Many strange and wonderful ancient statues have been discovered in Caucasia, Russia. 
but the one known as Kistas is the most famous. Translated into English, its name means Stone Girl, although why anyone thought that the figure depicted on the statue is female is anybody's guess. It's thought that the statue, along with all of the others like it, is a product of the Okunev people, who lived in this part of the world around 5,000 years ago. They were a Bronze Age culture, so it's difficult to imagine how they managed to produce such beautiful works of art in solid stone. Kaistas weighs seven tons and must have been dragged more than eight miles from where the rock was quarried to where it was found on the shore of Lake Black Sherinsky. Bronze tools wouldn't have made any impression on stone this hard, and stone tools ought to have been less precise. More to the point, why work with this material at all when there were so many easier to use options around? As a final thought, take a closer look at the humanoid face on the front of the sculpture. Is it us? Or does that look more like the traditional depiction of a gray alien than any human face you've ever seen? Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.